And here's a follow-up to a story. I believe I did this, the Thai model that was attacked in uh, Times Square subway. This was back in November, a few months ago. Man with 44 prior arrests charged with multiple felonies for brutal assault of Thai model on New York City subway. And there you could see him he knock the woman to the ground. And right there. He had jumped the subway. And there are no cops, you know. <laughs> you gotta wonder. At that time in the morning, there are no cops in the subway, you know. You're on your own if you travel down in there at that time of the night. No cops to help you out. A man has been charged in connection with a vicious attack that left a 23-year-old Thai model with a bloodied face in New York City last November. The incident, which was caught on surveillance video, occurred on the 34th Street Herald Square subway. So this is down south of Times Square platform at around 4 a.m. On November 22nd, <laughs> you know, I laugh because 4 a.m., even in, in Bangkok, Thailand, the trains don't run there at that time. This woman, obviously, she uh, she doesn't really know about New York or did her research because even me, as a man, you won't catch me 4 a.m. <laughs> on a train subway platform, much less a woman. Yeah, yep, much less a woman. The victim, Bu Jira Jari Yawetch, was waiting for a train home when someone grabbed her from behind, dragged her along the platform, punched her in the face, and took off with her wallet. The attack left Jira Jari Yawetch, that's a difficult name to pronounce unquestionably traumatized and suffering from persistent nightmares. Her attorney, Eric Panis, told the Daily Mail. And it's right here, a tweet. Uh, right here. Okay, and right there, you can see the video. I'll tell you one thing. The New York City subway even though they don't have cops, they pride themselves on having cameras all over, you know? So it's like somebody can kill you, you go to your grave, and the only consolation is that, yeah, a camera more than likely caught it. So this is what New York City, the subways are up to. They tell, yeah, you know, if you're a victim of crime, there's a good chance it's been caught in a camera. Yeah, you should feel better, right? I'm going to call her Jay. Her name is so, so long. Jay, who had moved from Thailand to New York to study English and pursue a modeling career, said she was lucky to be alive after the incident. On Saturday, police announced that they had charged 40-year-old Kevin Douglas. Well, his name is, <laughs> his name is easy to pronounce. With second-degree robbery, third-degree robbery, and second degree assault in connection with the attacks of last Thursday. I wonder what would first degree assault be. Douglas, however, has been in police custody since November 22nd when he was arrested just hours after he allegedly attacked Jay for a separate crime he allegedly committed in J Jamaica. So they had him in custody and they didn't even know he was the same guy. Police were only able to connect him with the subway incident last week. Wow, look at that. They had this guy in custody since November, like right after he committed this crime and they didn't even know they have him. Records shows Douglas has been arrested 44 times for crimes dating back to 1977. He was 
even arrested a record 16 time in a single day on May 13th, 2019. And this was before the pandemic, right? May 13th, 2019. <laughs> Nobody heard of the, of the coronavirus back then, of COVID. And this guy was carrying on like that. 16 times arrested in a single day, according to the New York Post. This is crazy. My goodness. Jonathan Chang, this portrait was hard to get through and I have debated even posting it, but I feel that Bu J story needs to be amplified in the wake of these subway attacks. So this guy drew a picture of her. Yeah. Douglas remains behind bars on a seventy-five thousand dollar bail. Well, that's a low bail. He will return to court on April eleven. You know why he belongs like on an isolated island. Yeah. Like like Robinson Crusoe. Where he can never get off. The news of the arrest brought a sense of relief to Jay, who told the New York Post, nothing can change what happened to me, but I am happy to know he, c he cannot do this to someone else. Yeah, but they keep letting this guy go. You know? Anyway, I'm glad he's caught, but look at the guy who killed uh, the woman in, in Chinatown. You know? Walked right behind her, up into her sixth floor, apartment, uses one of her knife and kills her and puts her in a bad tub. He has blood all over him, scratches all over him. He was found under her bed hiding and he tells the police he didn't do it. The guy is obviously mentally ill, I think. The police and uh, the city, they got to rein these people in. Get these mentally ill people off the streets of New York. They have no business being out there, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, from what I heard, ever since uh, the Reagan administration, that's when they changed the laws. And you have all these mentally ill people out. Before, we used to have mentally ill people house. And then they cut taxes and so forth. And then uh, you have a stream of mentally ill people just roaming the street. There's no money for mentally ill people, you know, because you have to house these people somewhere. And since the 1980s, that's when everything changed. And you have a bunch of people out there, homeless people all over the street. It wasn't, it wasn't like that when I was growing up. Mm -mm. And I grew up right here in New York City. It wasn't like that at all. You didn't see all these homeless people and crazy people in the street. You saw people on the Bari, like the Bari bombs. People who are drinking alcohol and losers, you know, who dropped out of life, but not like the mentally ill. This is something different. This this goes back to like the 1980s when they changed the tax laws and allowed these crazies to be out and no fund, no funds to uh, house them. 